February 12, 1941. Nazi Lieutenant General Erwin Rommel arrives to the Libyan capital of Tripoli to take command of the Africa Corps, whose men began landing there the day before. It is he and the 30,000 troops of the Africa Corps to reverse the situation on the North African battlefield of World War II. Erwin Rommel, a favorite of Adolf Hitler, has been on the rise for some time, but in Africa he will fully excel. He would become a true military star, one of history's boldest strategists and the darling of the Germans, nicknamed the Desert Fox. But he will also gain great respect from the Western Allies. He even makes the cover of Time magazine, but he won't be in the limelight for long. In just three years, events took a turn for the worse, like something out of an ancient tragedy. Erwin Rommel was born in 1891 in Heidenheim, about 80 kilometers east of Stuttgart. Unlike most Wehrmacht generals, he did not come from a wealthy aristocratic family. He was the son of a teacher and had to earn everything himself. But he had a clear vision of the future from the start. At the age of 19, he enters military school, and when he is 23, World War I begins, where he commands an infantry corps with incredible bravery. His trademark is a tireless attack accompanied by surprising strategic maneuvers. He leads his men into battles and becomes so popular that he eventually receives the highest German military award and ends the war with the rank of captain. By the post-war era, he is a married man. In 1916, he marries Lucia Maria Mullen in Danzig, and 12 years later, their only son Manfred is born. Erwin is still serving in the army and just like his father, he teaches at military schools in Dresden or Potsdam, where he also publishes his memoirs, Infantry Attacks. It is a bestseller that even Chancellor Adolf Hitler reads with interest. Sympathy is mutual. Although Rommel never joins the Nazi party and does not care for its ideology, he welcomes Hitler's rise to power as a means of restoring German pride and possibly the start of another war. Hitler first approaches Rommel to provide security for the Nazi party rally at Nuremberg in 1937, and when he proves himself, offers him the post of Commandant of the Special Unit, which was in charge of the Fuhrer's security on the road. Rommel's first task is Hitler's trip to the occupied Sudetenland in October 1938, when the occupation of the entire territory of Bohemia and Moravia begins in March 1939. Rommel accompanies Hitler and advises him to go to Prague Castle in triumph and to declare a protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. Rommel then assists from afar in the outbreak of World War II in September 1939. He is fascinated by how quickly German tanks occupy a large part of Poland. With having commanded infantry all his life, he persuades Hitler to put him in command of a panzer division for the next operation. In May 1940, the attack on France begins. Rommel's 7th Panzer Division joins the fight and eliminates its enemies at a tremendous speed. This causes chaos. Rommel precedes the battle with his popular quote in mind. When the enemy is on the run, our attack is just beginning. In this blitzkrieg, his division breaks the previous tank record by advancing 230 kilometers in 24 hours. His enemies as well as his superiors often lose sight of him, and Rommel's unit is nicknamed the Ghost Division. After the conquest of France, Rommel is given the mission of a lifetime. Until then, North Africa had been out of reach for Adolf Hitler. But his Italian ally Mussolini decided that from his colony of Libya, he would invade Egypt, which was under British control. Had he succeeded in capturing the Suez Canal, he would have eliminated a key source for supplying the British Empire, which could have decided the war. 
But the British recovered from the Italian invasion and pushed their troops back, deep into Libyan territory. At that point, Hitler decided to send a single army corps to assist the Italians, with a new lieutenant general, Erwin Rommel, in command. He landed in Tripoli on February 12, 1941, and his Africa Corps began to work. The deserts of North Africa are a dream for Rommel. Here he can implement his tactics of quick tank movements without any restrictions. His swift offensive, which neither the enemy nor his superiors expect, will drive the British into Egyptian territory. The thousands of kilometers of territory will be conquered by the Germans in Italy in just two months. But then the weaknesses of a rapid advance become apparent. The supply routes are so stretched out that they run out of provisions and petrol for the vehicles. Secondly, the rapid advance means that Rommel has left behind an uncaptured city. He would have to return to the port city of Tobruk, and that was a problem. The city is defended by an international force of Australians, Indians, Poles. They'll be supported for six months by 643 Czechoslovaks from the 11th Infantry Battalion. <laughs> It will eventually take 400 days for Tobruk to surrender. In June 1942, Rommel shifted his attack toward Cairo, which is considered one of his greatest achievements. At the age of 50, he is named the youngest field marshal in German history, and the propaganda makes him the biggest star of the Wehrmacht. Rommel is also gaining recognition in the West. His leadership skills are those of an old-school officer, he treats captured soldiers according to the Geneva Conventions, and the Eastern Front massacres of civilians are not happening in his country. His luck begins to fade, however, in the autumn of 1942, when the Americans start to help the British. At first, they send new tanks, and eventually they take initiative themselves in Algeria and Morocco, with their first deployment on this side of the Atlantic in World War II. Rommel embarks on one of the longest and also supposedly best executed retreats in history, when he withdraws the remainder of his troops from Egypt to Tunisia, where he feels he can better defend himself against approaching adversaries. But there is a problem. It becomes clear to him that there is no help there, and he asks Hitler to allow him to evacuate the rest of his troops to Europe. But Hitler never allows the retreat. He sends Rommel away, and leaves the Africa Corps to fight a futile battle that ends in May 1943 by surrendering to the Allies. This is the end of the Nazi adventure in North Africa. After this, Rommel's relationship with the Fuhrer changes. His next deployment will only confirm this. In the autumn of 1943, he is given the task of inspecting the Atlantic Wall against a possible Allied invasion of Europe. He is to be one of the commanders of the German defenses there. However, he does not agree with Hitler, and the solution is ultimately half-hearted and dysfunctional. By D-Day on the 6th of June 1944, Rommel is not even there. He and his staff have assessed that an invasion is impossible due to a forecast of bad weather, and he left for Germany to celebrate his wife's birthday. Then when he hurriedly returns to France, he has to salvage the situation, but everything is falling apart. On the 15th of July, Rommel wrote a letter to Hitler giving him a last chance to end the hostilities with the Western Allies, urging Hitler to, to make a separate peace. On the 17th of July, 1944, Rommel is incapacitated by an Allied air attack and his head is seriously injured. July 20th, in Hitler's bunker in the Wolf's Lair, a bomb attempt of assassination is carried out by a group of spies led by Klaus von Stauffenberg. It should lead to a coup d'etat and a negotiated peace with the West. But Hitler survives and begins to eliminate all the plotters without mercy. After intense interrogation, Rommel's name will also be mentioned.
Until today, there is no credible information about his involvement in the plot, but all indications are that Rommel knew of the assassination and did not report it, which implied guilt. The Fuhrer is dealing with an unpleasant problem. He must punish one of the nation's greatest darlings in a way that doesn't seem suspicious. On October 14, 1944, a car with two generals pulls up at Rommel's house, where Rommel is still recovering from a severe head wound. He is given a choice. Either we put you on treason trial, we expropriate your property, and your wife and son may be imprisoned in a concentration camp, or you swallow the cyanide capsule and we declare that you died as a hero. We'll arrange a state funeral for you and pay your family a lifetime annuity. A shocked Rommel has 15 minutes to decide, but there's nothing to think about. He shortly says goodbye to his wife and to his 15-year-old son, Manfred. Within a few minutes, it's all over. And thus ends the career of a man who, metaphorically speaking, boarded Hitler's train, rode in his luxury coupe, only to find out that there's no getting off.